Susan. Hello, Lynn. I'm glad somebody's here hanging out on a Saturday evening. I uh, wanted to play around in the studio, so I thought I would just jump on and we could hang out together on a Saturday night. My husband and son are off camping, um, so I've had the day to myself, so that's probably why I feel like coming in. Um, so I have some ideas that I want to work on for Valentine's Day, so I gathered some stuff already. Um, I have some watercolor paper, I have some crayons, some watercolors. Um, I just ran and got water because I forgot that there was none in my studio. Um, so I'm just going to do some playing around. I was I wanted to play around with some watercolor resists and then cut some hearts out and maybe have a couple of extra Valentine's postcards that I can drop off this week with some friends. So I'm going to get my, all my decorations. If you haven't been to Trader Joe's or if you have a Trader Joe's, um, they have these felt garlands and I love them. I get them every season when they have them. Um, and now they have Valentine's Day one, so you have to get it. Um, I wanted to let all of you know, if you don't know, that I am doing an online retreat at the end of February. So it's February 24th through 26th. It's going to be an abstract color voyage, which is the same theme as I had for my most recent in-person retreat. But we are going to be expanding on the theme. So this year I've decided to have two in-person retreats that are connected to two online retreats. So how that works is I'll do my in-person, which this one we had um, back in January now, last month, and we covered some of the basics of color theory, we covered abstract composition, and we did some exercises that led us to some more um, abstract explorations and color explorations. So to build on that, I'm bringing it online for those of you who don't want to travel or couldn't travel or whatever the case may be. So you'll still get some of those basics. You'll get color theory. You'll get my takes on color theory. You'll get um, some basics of abstract composition. But then everything after that will be completely different. So we will have um, lots of different exercises. It's over three days. So it's a Friday evening, most of Saturday, and then a couple hours on Sunday morning that we will go ahead and work through all of that. Um, so it's going to be a lot of fun, and I have another video coming next week that gives you more details. But if you're interested now and you want to see more, you can, um, after this video, just check out my bio, and there's a link there for the online retreat. So like I said, I have some watercolor paper. Um, I just grabbed some of my watercolors, um, so I have my my messy pans here. Um, but I also have been started collecting these metallic ones, so I think I'll go ahead and try some of those out. I have my water handy. Um, I'm just going to use a big watercolor brush because I'm really going to be doing big washes of color over top. But the first thing I want to do is play around with some resists. So a lot of times when you're using watercolor, um, you can put something down first that will cause the, the paint to kind of repel off of that thing that you're using. Um, some of the, the easiest ones are a Crayola crayon. Um, ironically, I didn't have a white Crayola crayon. <laughs> So I grabbed a red one because I thought, well, that would look cool too. But then I did have a white beeswax crayon. I had a set of these, so I went ahead and grabbed that. Most of the things I grabbed, I want it to be white. Um, so I grabbed a white oil pastel. I grabbed, um, this is a solid paint marker. Um, 
that I'm gonna go ahead and try. This is more like an oil paint, so I don't know if this one's gonna work as well. I have a traditional China marker, the ones where you peel off, but then I have a non-traditional China marker. So this is just the China part, the China marker part that's inside, but you don't have to peel it. I get these off of Amazon and I love them um, because I am not good at, at peeling these. I always peel too much and then I have this big long part that breaks. Um, so some of these other things I have, I have not tried as resist before, so it'll be an experiment. So I have a Vicki Booten um, crayon. It doesn't say what they are, but I know she had these packs of crayons. Um, so I have grabbed one of those. I grabbed a Neo Color, which is water soluble. Um, so I have a feeling it's not gonna work that great, but eh, we'll try it. Also the Distress Crayon. This is also water soluble so I'm not sure how it'll work. And then I bought these, um, these are Tim Holtz's Distress Watercolor Pencils, and I just grabbed the white one because I wanted to see how they work with watercolor. I grabbed a couple other colors, but now I'm kind of, I kind of like the idea of white, so I probably won't use those right away. Um, so just regular old 140 pound watercolor paper. You can use whatever you have lay around. I just happen to have a pack of this sitting here. Um, so that's why I grabbed that. So I'm going to start first with the one that I know will work, which is my beeswax crayon. The, the hardest part of this is knowing where you're putting your designs. So um, one of the designs I like to do is just kind of a, a squiggly line and so I just kind of go all over my paper and the great thing about using these crayons is you don't really have to wait for anything to dry but I want to get a couple so we can reveal the magic all at once um, so I'm going to try the, the grease pencil or the china pencil now. And you don't have to do the same pattern over the whole page. You can just do little parts here or there. Maybe I'll do a couple circles. So let me ahead and add some oil pastel. This is another one that I know will work because I've used this one before. I think all of the water soluble ones I'm going to put on one page so if it doesn't work then they're all on that page and I don't have to worry about it. Now well, that was a dirty grease pencil. I'm not really good at keeping my tool is clean, so that's not a big surprise. I'm sure I rubbed it through some paint at some point. All right, so I'm gonna do these that I don't know. So my Distress Crayon, which is also dirty. Like I said, this one is water soluble. So I'm not really sure how it's going to work out, um, but we'll find out. The Vicky Booten, Booten crayons, I think these were water soluble, but I don't remember now. I've had them, they've really just been kind of hanging out in my drawer. So I don't really remember their properties, but we'll find out. It's just paper, so. What's the worst that could happen? Um, and then these are Tim Holtz's Distress Color Pencils, Watercolor Pencils. Oh, so also water soluble. So we'll see. We might get some interesting effects mixing a water soluble with a watercolor. I'm going to do, I'll go ahead and do some of this Neo color. 
Again, water soluble, but usually I have to work a little harder at these, so I'm hoping that if I just do a light wash, it will not go too crazy and spread too far. And then I'm going to come back to, oh, let me go ahead and use, this is the solid paint marker. Um, I will tell you, if you are, um, if you don't like stronger smells, these are not the tool for you. Um, they're a tempura paint, um, and the, the smell reminds me a little bit of an oil paint. So I usually don't keep them open very long, and I usually try to have a fan on. So I'm going to go ahead and work on these in the order that I created them. So we'll start with the swirls. I'm going to grab my watercolor, and I'll just move all this out of the way. I found a new palette because, of course, you know, huh, I needed another one. Um, but I was at an antique store, and I found this old... Um, iron but enamel covered platter oops that's very loud sorry um so that's what i'm using as my palette tonight so i'm just going to get my i'm going to go traditional right now it's valentine's day so i'm going to pull up the reds and the pinks. I may add some purple. We'll see. I'm just going to slide that over. Bring this first sheet back. And this is the, the magic part, the part that I like. You can see how the paint just starts separating. It will not stay on top of that resist. So this is that beeswax crayon, which I told you I knew was going to work because I've used this one plenty of times before. And I'm really liking how this turns out. Now what I'm going to do with these, once I get them dry, is I'll probably go ahead and cut out some hearts. If you hear crying in the background, it is not a baby because I am home alone, except I have a 14-year-old four-legged baby who has now made her way under my desk, even though she was set up in the other room with snacks and her heating pad because that's what she likes to do at night. <laughs> She's not spoiled at all. Not at all. But... Now she just flopped under the desk. So if you heard something that sounded like an earthquake, it was my sweet Rosa. That's the great thing. When you get to be 14, which is however many years in dog years, you pretty much get to do whatever you want. So here, once I get some color on, you can kind of play around. And if you want to... Just drop in some more color. You can see even here where I dropped on more color on top, it will still resist. And any color that kind of sits on top, you'll be able to wipe off once everything starts drying out. She decided she didn't want to be here, so now she had to make her way back out again. So I'm going to set this one off to the side. I'm going to let that little bit of red in the middle kind of move around and just see what effect I get. 
I may have to hit them a little bit with a heat gun or at least roll a paper towel across them or something just so that I can see them. So this is the, the two types of China marker that I had. Um, the oil pastel and then this was the other China marker. Um, so let's see. Like I said, I've used the China marker before, so I know that that one works really well. And remember, this China marker, it doesn't have a really big, um, a really fine point, so I'm getting a lot of bigger lines. Whereas with the crayon, I had a little bit more of like a wedge to it, so I was able to to kind of control it and have a finer line. This is giving me a bigger line. So this section right here is my oil pastel. It is like really, really pulling up. I'm just hitting it with a whole bunch of water first so that I can get these colored faster. I'm sure it's very exciting watching me color things in slow motion. I'm gonna add a little bit of purple So you can see that oil pastel, it just, it won't hold on to anything, which is great. As long as you remember, you have it on your page. You never want to put that down and then think, oh, well, I'll just add a little something over top because it will not happen. Fortunately, oil pastel takes a little bit longer to dry and set. So sometimes you can get it off. So this upper corner here was the China pencil that you don't have to pull anything off of. Um, and I'm not as happy with that resist. I think I still prefer the more traditional China pencil. Um, I may have to play with the same patterns and see but I still, I love that the oil, how the oil pastel, just nothing will hold on there. Just going to add a little bit more color just to make these a little, a little more outstanding. I'll see what that one looks like in a few minutes. And this one was my war the more water solubles so we had the distress crayon we had vicky Booten, um, and we had the watercolor pencil from tim holtz from distress so just getting some water down probably shouldn't add that much water but and I have some watercolor that's coming off of this one. So let's just add it. <laughs> I'll make this one dry a little faster. I'll go ahead and add. Just so you guys know, if you're sending me messages or waving, I don't can't necessarily see it. I have everything um, set up right in front of me. Um, but I have the wrong glasses on to be able to see that close because <laughs> I am at that age. So down here where I had the watercolor pencil, I kind of expected this one would just go away. So I can't see any resist at all, which I mean, that's, that's what you would expect from a watercolor pencil. Um, this is the area where I had Vicki Booten's crayon. Uh, I get a little bit of resist, but there's not a huge amount. And then this upper corner was my distress crayon, which I'm expecting is just gone. 
this was definitely the experiment page. Yeah, Biggie's crayon held up a little more than I was expecting. I sp suspected it was more water soluble, but it is providing somewhat of a, of a resist. All right, and the last one was our paint marker and more of the beeswax crayon, I think. When I thought about doing this, I was like, oh, I should, you know, write down in pencil what I'm going to do in, on each sheet. But obviously, that didn't happen. I knew I said I was going to use other colors, but I'm going kind of traditional right now. I just thought these would be cute. I need to put together a little Valentine's package for my in-laws because they live here, so I didn't have to mail it. So I thought, well, I'm at home. I have time. I might as well go ahead and make up some cute little Valentines. All right. Kind of disappointing. Um, this was my paint marker, I believe, and then this was my um, beeswax crayon, which I think still ends up being the overall winner. So a beeswax crayon, is, it's very similar to a Crayola. If you have a white Crayola, I just didn't have one. Um, I'm sure I've, because I do stuff like this, I'm sure I've used them all up. I saw someone had said that now you can order a box of just single color crayons. So like if you want white crayons, you can just order a whole box of white crayons. My kiddo is 16, so I haven't really bought crayons in quite a while. Um, but I may be looking into that because a lot of times I would buy them, you know, when the, when the school year was starting because they'd be, you know, 50 cents, 75 cents, whatever. And then I would go ahead and, and just pull out the, the few that I was going to use, which was typically white and black and teal, of course. But um, I'm just adding, I'm just trying to add some interest because this top half of the page is going to be really boring. So I'll just get that to move around a little. It is nice when you have the resist on there and you move your paint around you can see it moves around the resist so it almost looks like you had a stencil down I kind of like that whole section so let's go back I'm going to try to find a somewhat dry spot so that I can come back to this very first one that we did. And it's drying pretty good. There's just that little bit in the center that hasn't dried out real quick. If you want to uh, turn your sound down for a second, I'm just gonna hit it with my heat tool so that I can go ahead and show you how I would cut these out and how cool they look. Oh, I just remembered. I forgot that I wanted to use this metallic. So, I'm just going to add a couple of splashes of this metallic onto everything. Oh, it is much more like a, almost like a burgundy once I get it out of the pan and onto my palette. So, yeah, it's almost like rust colored. Yeah, that's not my favorite. But splatters make everything look better, so I will add to all of them, including 
everything else that's on my desk because I didn't clean up very well. All right, now I'm going to use my heat tool again. So if you want to turn your sound down. I'm just going to try to pick up these little pools. Um, I'm going to show you one of my little tricks. I like to keep a little package of coffee filters on my desk. And especially when I'm working in watercolor, I like to use these to soak up the extra because as they build up, you can use them as really cool collage fodder. So I usually just keep these sitting around. Um, I'll also clean up my palette. So any of my paint that's left on the palette, I'll just go ahead and dip that in. And then I just lay these out to dry and you get some really cool patterns. So this one is mostly dry. So what I'm gonna do is I usually just flip it over. Sometimes I'll just grab my scissors and start cutting, but you can either grab a template, something to, to write around, draw around, or you can kind of just freeform a heart on the back so that you have something to follow. Or like I said, I like to just grab my scissors and I kind of just go for it. And I like kind of wonky hearts, so I usually make one side bigger. And I just trim them up here and there. You know, there's hearts of all different shapes. I always think of those kind of like country folk art hearts. I like that this one had a little, it already had a little curly cue kind of at the bottom. So you can make whatever heart you want. I really want this red section here. I love this. You can see all that resist. Now remember I was telling you some of it will sit on top. Most of it already came off, but you can actually wipe some of it off if you really want. Because it will still sit on top of that resist. Make one a little bigger. So I just love how these look. I mean, the paper, yeah, it's great, but once I start cutting stuff out of it, I just love how they look. And then a lot of times I will go ahead and grab like a fine liner or a Sharpie or, or anything like that. And then I add a little bit of doodling. My plan for these is I have some craft paper postcards. So I'm gonna go ahead, you probably shouldn't do this on wet watercolor. Let me grab a Sharpie, because that will work out better. Because if I ruin a Sharpie, I don't mind. By the way, this is my new favorite Sharpie. It is, let's see what, what the color is called. Oh, do Sharpies not have colors? Well, it's like this, it's not quite navy. It feel, it seems like it has a little bit of gray in it, 
Um, and the reason I like it is because it's not black. So if I'm doing something like this and I want something that's not quite as stark as black, it works really well. So I just never realized that Sharpies didn't have names. Yeah. There you go. Learn something new today. So I'll just add some doodles here and there. I'll also probably grab one of those word packs. You know, we all have a ton of these. Um, either the single word or the, the sayings. I like to grab these because I so rarely use these. Um, I I like to add a little bit of glue stick behind them because mine are old. Um, I don't even know how many years I've had on my because I have multiple packs and so I always just add a little bit of glue stick behind them to make sure that they really stick. All right, so I'm back in the studio and I have gone ahead and my pages, most of them dried. I went ahead and I just cut out some different sized hearts. And then I'm gonna go ahead and sew on some of these. But first, I just want to add a little shadow around the, oops, um, add a little shadow around the side. So I just like to take my black marker to do this because it makes it a little easier than the traditional way of getting out my ink pad and my dabber. So, And at this point you could doodle, you could do really anything you want to embellish these hearts. You could add some collage. I'm just gonna leave them pretty simple because I want to add that line of stitching down the center. So just a little bit of black outline. And then what I've done is I have built these little book packages. So I had some tissue paper so I went ahead and I just cut some squares that were the approximate size of my heart. So I could have some of those. I've layered some book page underneath. And then I've just used some clips to hold them in place. Now I'm going to get my sewing machine and I'm just going to sew right down the center. And then we'll come back and we'll trim these out. Alright, so I got those all stitched and I just used a simple straight stitch. Um, I did do a little back stitch at the top and the bottom. If you are a seamstress, you'll scream because my bobbin thread is a different color than my top thread, so I just don't like changing it out that often, so I leave it. So now I'm just going to use this top heart as my guide to trace around and cut out my little booklet.
Now I have my little booklet. It has some tissue paper and it has a couple of book pages. And I'll probably add these just to the top of a postcard just to add a little dimension to the top of that. But first I'm going to go ahead and trim the rest of these. So now I have just my basic brown craft cards. So I'm just going to fold those in half and I'll just start building my Valentines. So these ones that I know I want to be dimensional, I'll just go ahead and fold them on the stitch line first. And then I'm going to add glue to the very back page. Go ahead and add that on. I'm just going to press it down. So you can orient them either, either way, whichever you prefer. And then I'm, I am going to embellish around these a little bit more. And I'll add a little message on the inside before I give them away. This one I forgot to bend, so I can just do it now. Make sure that last page is pressed down. Make sure that your glue stick didn't travel and get on any of the other pages. Let that one dry. Let's just do one more. I want to do this one. This one does not have a book. I just added some loose stitching on the top. So this one will be flat. These strings on the back I'm going to trim, but I'm going to leave the ones on the front because I like loose threads when I have stitch work like this. And press that one down. So I'll do that with all of these. The only one that is slightly different, I have two that are slightly different. Um, these two that I made, I actually gave them a back. So I took a piece of the same watercolor paper and just put it on the back before I stitched it. So now I also use some graph paper in here. So now as I open these and fold them in, it has a back on it more like a traditional book would have. So what I will probably do is add a little message on the front here, but then I'll probably tuck it into one of these cards as a little gift to go along. And I'll do the same with this little one. So it's a little journaling spot that you could tuck in to a journal or a book or anything that you're working on. So I'll probably tuck those in. So those are the only ones different. But let's go ahead and add some more embellishing. So I just grabbed a couple of things that I had sitting around. I don't know where this tool came from, but 
I've had it sitting around my studio. So I thought, well, I might as well use it. So I'm going to take a little piece of that. I still use glue stick when I use tool. It'll come through. It'll get on your fingers, but I just want it to hold down and I don't need anything super intense to hold this down because it's kind of multi-layered. I may just have to add a little bit more glue, but I'm going to put something on top of there. So that will hold it down too. So I'm just going to look through my scraps because of course I didn't throw those away and see if I can find a little piece that's a different color. I want it to stand out a little bit. So maybe this hot pink. I think I actually want to tear it. I'm going to add, I think, a little black around the edge. Just have to find my black marker again. grab my small talk sayings again. I so rarely use these Valentine's ones that I feel like I need to use those. I think I'm just going to go simple. XO, XO, XO. So like I said, I like to add a little bit of glue to the back. I want this a little smaller. So trim it down. I'll just re-ink that one edge. Let's see. Let's see what else I can add. I just feel like, I don't know, I need a little something extra. So a loose little torn heart maybe. Just to add something else behind. Behind the paper but in front of the tool. Obviously if you're mailing cards like this, you have to think about how many layers you're putting down. Um, so that you may have to pay a little extra postage and of course you don't want anything that would be crushed flat so a lot of times I do cards like this when I know I'm going to be handing it to the person so see because of the size this still folds in so I can still kind of fluff it up and have my pages Then I am just going to open it up. I'm going to do a quick Happy Valentine's Day on the inside, and my card will be done. So now I'll just tuck that, tuck that little extra book in there, grab my envelope, and this will be ready to go for Valentine's Day. So I'll go ahead and keep making my way through. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time in my studio. Have a great day, and happy arting.